Hello. In this video we'll consider the objectives behind setting transfer prices and also look at how we might calculate them in practice. The transfer price is the price at which an internal sale occurs. In other words, if one division of a group sells to another division of the same group, the transfer price is the price they set for this sale. Financial accountants may at first view appear to be supremely indifferent as to what this number is. After all, the revenue in one division equals the costs in the other division, and the two simply cancel out on consolidation for financial reporting purposes. However, this is an overly dismissive view. As management accountants, we're concerned to make sure the transfer price that's chosen motivates the right kind of behaviour in the seller and the buyer. There are four main objectives that should be considered with a transfer price. Firstly, goal congruence. The decisions that divisional managers make as a result of the transfer price set should be consistent with group objectives. Secondly, autonomy. Divisional managers should be allowed to make their own decisions as to whether or not to buy internally or externally and also ideally to set the transfer price. The more autonomy they have, the more responsibility they can be given as to the results of their division. This should be motivational for the divisional manager. Thirdly, performance assessment. The divisional financial reports should present a fair reflection of the true performance of that division. For example, we wouldn't want a truly efficient and effective division to be returning a loss purely as a result of an unusual transfer pricing policy. And finally, tax. To a limited degree, tax implications should be considered with transfer pricing that involves divisions located in different countries. It's worth pointing out, however, that tax legislation is tightening up in this area and opportunities for tax planning are reducing globally. These four objectives can be remembered with the word gap tax. Let's initially consider transfer pricing from an economic theoretical viewpoint. Suppose we have two divisions, Division A and Division B. Division A manufactures a component which can be sold to the outside world for $10. Division B also uses this component in their own production process. In Division B's local market, they can acquire a similar component that's perfectly adequate for $9. Let's have a look at the costs in each division. So in Division A, they have their own variable manufacturing costs of $5 plus $2 fixed cost per unit, giving them a total full cost of $7. In Division B, assuming they buy in from the outside at the moment, they have their own manufacturing variable costs of 3, the cost of the component they buy in from the outside of 9, and their own fixed costs per unit of 2, giving them a total cost of $14 per unit. Suppose initially Division A has some spare capacity in its factory. This is important as it means transferring internally to Division B won't cause Division A to have to give up some external sales of the component. In these circumstances, firstly, let's consider what's best for the group as a whole. Should the group produce this component and transfer it internally, or should the group buy it in from the outside at a cost of $9? Well, the cost of making extra components for internal transfer is only $5 compared to the external price of $9. In these circumstances, it's best for the group if the internal transfer occurs. Secondly, let's consider what transfer price will cause this to happen. Division A will be happy so long as they receive more than $5 per component. This is the variable cost of manufacture. Note the fixed cost is irrelevant, as by definition it will not vary with output. The buying division, Division B, will be happy provided it pays less than $9. This is the price it pays for buying the component in from the outside world. 
So a transfer price in the range $5 to $9 would appear to encourage goal congruent behaviour. Say $7 halfway between the two. At $7 the seller will want to sell and the buyer will want to buy and this is best for the group as a whole. Let's now consider how this decision might change if Division A is operating at full capacity. The significance of this is that Division A will have to sacrifice some external sales to be able to make internal transfers. Let's again first consider what's best for the group. The cost of an internal transfer here would be the variable cost of manufacture of $5 per component plus the lost contribution from the external sale they had to give up. This lost contribution would be $10 revenue less $5 variable cost is another $5. So the total cost to the group is $5 variable cost of manufacture plus $5 lost contribution is $10 per component internally transferred. This is more than the $9 it costs to buy the component in from the outside. In these circumstances, it's better for Division A to make all the components it can and sell them to the outside world and for Division B to buy all their components locally. There is therefore no optimal transfer price as the transfer should not occur. In fact, any number you care to pick will mean either the seller doesn't want to sell or the buyer doesn't want to buy. The seller would only be happy if they receive more than $10 to compensate them for the cost incurred in the internal transfer and the buyer will only accept the internal transfer if it costs less than the $9 it costs them to buy it in from the outside. There is no price that is simultaneously more than $10 and less than $9. This reflects the point that there is no optimal transfer price in this case as the transfer should not happen. In summary, the transfer price should be derived by considering the full cost to the group of an internal transfer. If the intermediate market is perfect, in other words, there's infinite capacity and only one market price, then the only logical place for the transfer price to be is at that market price. If the universal market price for a component was $10, there's no reason why the seller should accept any less than $10 and no reason why the buyer should pay any more than $10. This approach to transfer pricing is known as market-based or opportunity cost-based transfer pricing. Lots of businesses use a cost plus approach. That is to say they base their transfer price on accounting style cost plus a markup. Firstly, Let's consider whether the cost figure should be variable cost or full cost. Full cost plus a markup might be very expensive for the buying division and they may choose to purchase from the outside. This may not be in the best interest of the group as a whole because the fixed cost element of manufacture would happen anyway and therefore the true cost of manufacture may well better be expressed by excluding fixed cost. An alternative might be to use variable cost plus a markup. However, care will need to be taken to make sure that the selling division is making a sufficient return to encourage the internal transfer if that is what is indeed optimal for the group as a whole. Secondly, let's consider whether the cost base should be actual cost or standard cost when setting transfer prices. In general, standard cost should be used. If we were to use the actual costs of the selling division, this would discourage cost control in that selling division because they know they can recover their costs through the transfer price. This encourages inefficiency. Using standard costs should overcome this because if the selling division overruns on cost, the excess cost stays in the selling division if the only revenue they get is based on standard. It's worth noting that sometimes an internal transfer is actually less expensive than an external sale. There can be some genuine cost savings, such as distribution, packaging, ordering costs. It's only fair that the savings should be shared between the buyer and the seller through the transfer price that's chosen. Finally, 
There are some non-financial considerations to bear in mind with transfer pricing. For example, although it might be cheaper to purchase from the outside than to transfer internally, a company may still want to ensure the internal transfer happens. For example, a prestigious car brand would not want cheap bought-in components from another manufacturer when they have superior quality components within their own brand manufactured internally. It may protect the brand overall if components are made internally and this may need to be enforced centrally. In summary, transfer pricing is an important decision to get right in order to ensure goal congruent behaviour in a decentralised group where divisional managers are at liberty to buy and sell from and to wherever they choose. Logically, the first thing the group should do is ask what's best for the group overall, internal transfer or external purchase. Then the transfer price should be set to ensure decisions are made that are in the best interests of the group.